Wow, come everyone. Today we have an updated version of the Necromancer for Season 4. So looking behind me, let me show you something quite interesting. Now if you look closely, there's the boss and it's gone. <laughs> yes, I was able to pull out one massive hit with my latest update with the Necromancer build with a tier 70 pit. So you can see the boss level is 169 and the boss is dead. It actually took me a while to get a screenshot. So if you look closely, we did about 250 million damage, I believe, with one combo. So in this video, what I want to do is, I want to go through the entire replay of how you can clear pit 70, 73, 75, how to clear high level pit with my latest Necromancer setup, and how do you combo for high damage. So the build and also the guide will focus on two things. How to make the build, then how to deal tremendous damage. It is quite important for you to understand this combo, and this way, not only are you invulnerable using our latest setup with Blood Mist, you're also dealing tons of damage. And the build is really fun solo and also play as a group of friends. So, in order to give you guys a more demonstration, let's jump over to a replay with Pit Level 73. And I'm currently using the Holy Arrow Potion as I'll explain during the fights. So right away you're going to see with this build is that we'll be dealing tons of damage with so many minions, especially with the golem. We are invulnerable 90% of the time, as long as we have blood mist, which is always up, pretty much have no cooldowns if you do this correctly, you are one-shotting packs of monsters with over tier 70 with the pit. And the monster levels are pretty high, they're 172 over here. So looking at the build, what you are doing is, you are rushing in with your blood mist and then you'll be combining this with your corpse tendril and then finishing off with active spells with your golden. And in conjunction using your holy arrow potion, you are doing tons of damage AoE as the monsters explode. So the potion is like mini corpse explosion and using the correct combo as I show you guys over here, you will be doing tons of damage. Now you might be wondering, hey Matt, what do you mean by the combo? Well, the combo is what we talked about in the previous video. Now I have perfected for now with a solo playing, and my combo is to rush in with a blood mist. After coming out of the blood mist, I'll be casting Corpse Tendril, and then I'll finish the enemies off with an active spell with my golem. The combo works pretty well, but sometimes you might find yourself a little squishy with high level dungeons. As you're going to see in the replays, we're constantly getting lower cooldowns with this build. So this allows you to go into the Blamis form, becomes invulnerable, and then go back to combination to one-shot most of the monsters. Now fast forwarding a little bit, what you can notice compared to our previous setup is that I have removed the auto-casting of the ring. I have opted for a second legendary ring with better stats compared to the previous ring which allows me to be auto-casting my skeleton summons and also my corpse tendril. And this allows me to have even higher stats, giving us even greater utility. Now coming over to the boss fight, so this is a pit level tier 73 and you can see this time the boss is not summoning monsters. I have noticed that while using the holy potion, while the boss is summoning monsters, you can combine group the monsters and deal a massive damage. Unfortunately, without the boss summoning monsters, we cannot achieve you know hundreds and also hundreds of millions of damage. But as you can see in the fights, we deal pretty consistent damage, and 90% of the time you are invulnerable. So have a quick look of my blood mist, and pretty much all the time, you know, a majority of the time, I have my cooldowns to zero once I finish my mist. So this allows me to keep rotating my blood mist and taking almost no damage for the duration of the boss fight. As long as we're keeping the minions alive, we're dealing tons of damage against the boss. On the second half of the video, I'll explain more skill rotations and also tips to you guys to go even further with the pit and also how to do the boss fights. Now instead of jumping over to the gears and also explaining each of the FXs, I'm recommending coming over to our previous video and use a time step because 99% of the gears are unchanged. So here, this is an updated video which will follow up on the gear I have changed. So compared to previously, I was using this unique ring to be auto-casting Corpse Tendril every 11 seconds. But in comparison, notice this particular change on this legendary ring, which gives me more golem damage, more golem cooldowns, and even additional offensive legendary aspects to allow us to form even more damage. 
So the offensive aspects over here, we have Corpse Tendril having higher critical chance. We have increased at we have increased damage with Shadow Blight with over 180%. We also have Summoning Mini having att additional attack speed, additional attack speed with Army of the Dead, and also finally over here, Minion doing more damage. So this allows me to have Army of the Dead while having the Corpse Tendril with increased critical chance compared to the previous build because we're using the unique ring that was auto casting. The ring was nice, but this is the point. I want more survivability, more durability, and also even higher damage. Now, similar to the previous video, I have not changed any of the skills or paragons at the moment, and I'll have the builder's guide available to you guys as the updated version, because I do think this version will be stronger as you push for higher dungeons. So I won't go through those too much into details, but make sure you use the links below guys to have a look at the skills and also paragons of this particular setup if you have not seen the previous video. Now I do have to admit, during the previous video the builder's guide had a little mistake as I was putting it in, but it is fixed now. So the big focus of this video is actually this particular part. The highlight of this video is to teach you guys how to do rotations, how to do your combos, and how to deal tons of damage. So right away when you start a high level dungeon pit, what you're going to do with this build is you can use your ultimate to summon your skeletons, and this will max out, max out the skeletons. I will rush forward with my blood mist, then follow up with corpse tendril, and this allows me to enjoy the critical increase with the new legendary effects added on the gloves. And as we rush through the dungeon, you will be combining this combo I'll show you guys over here. So I summon my minions so I get all my skeletons. I rush forward to create some corpses with my blood mist, and then I'll cast my blood, I'll cast my corpse tendril after I drop corpses with my blood mist, and then I'll finish up by using the active spell of the golden on top where the corpse tendril is summoned. So this will group enemies together, and then one scream from the golden will finish everyone off. So the combination starts with creating corpses with blood mist casting Corpse Tendril and then finishing off with Active of the Golden. And if you combine this correctly while having this particular potion. So this particular potion is going to be a big game changer. I find that we lack a little damage to one shot everything if you don't have this potion. Elixir of Holy Bolt is actually very powerful and you can actually craft this one in the seasonal side over here. And if you have lots of opals, I do recommend crafting this potion. This one, <laughs> not this one. This one is extremely powerful and very, very potent. And using this particular combination, I create corpses, drag them together, and then group them for one shotting. And this will allow you to push through majority of the content without a problem. Now during this time, you do want to start the fight with a debuff of the crypt. And wherever you can, you do want to cast your summoning skeletons to give you additional buffs in terms of damage because of your legendary effects. And once you get used to this particular combo, you'll find yourself to have a very low cooldown with your blood mist. Because you're constantly lowering your cooldowns using decrypt and also lowering the cooldowns as you consume more corpses, you are doing tons of damage while staying alive the majority of the time. Because like my friend said, my friend Roy was saying, a good DPS is the one that survives. So this build now incorporates survivability, damage to combos, and also tons of movement speed and also mobility. Now coming over to the fight with the boss. Now what you can notice with the pit is that there are a number of bosses. Let's briefly talk about this particular spirit caller. Against the spirit caller, what you want to do is, I actually did just notice while I was doing the fight, the spirit caller will summon monsters. If you prepare your corpse tendril correctly and then follow up with the active of the golem, just on time when he summon the monsters, you'll pull them together, notice there's a bunch of them together, and then right when you cast the active of the golem, you actually one-shot them. Yes, this is a particular trick that allows me to deal tremendous damage. I was not able to replicate this against other bosses that does not summon. But if the boss monster was summoned, then you can use this combo to deal tremendous damage using this setup. Now let's have a look at the instances which you fight bosses that does not summon monsters. Well, what I do is, at the start of the fight, I'll come into the boss by using my blood mist. This creates some corpses while making me invulnerable. Over here I was a little greedy, I was casting my ultimate, and I probably shouldn't have done that. So now you can notice, majority of the time I'm only casting one or two spells after coming of the blood mist. You don't want to keep yourself vulnerable out of blood mist. 
So here I'm constantly casting Corpse Tendril and also the active of the Golem. Whenever I can, I will debuff the boss with the Curses and also I will summon more Skeletons so I get a buff with the Skeleton Priest. But majority of the time guys, you just want to cast one two spells and quickly go back to your Blood Mist. The advantage of this build is that you're constantly going to the Blood Mist and you're not taking damage, you're skipping all the boss mechanics. And there's no cooldown, right? So this is a really powerful setup that allows you to have tons of damage survivability against the boss. And remember boys, if the boss does summon, you can group them to one-shot them with a holy bot potion and also with a golem active. Now because majority of the details of build have not changed, I'll refer you back to this particular build if you want to look at the passives, the skeleton warriors, whatever your choices, and also the choices of the paragons and everything that's related to the video. And over here, what I do is I'll provide you guys with two replays. One replay is one I was one-shotting the boss with over 250 million damage with a combo. The second replay is what we played normally and we were able to clear the tier 73 pit. And both replays will demonstrate the combos I'm using. And you might see one to death over here. But you can see majority of the time we're unkillable when we're super powerful using this new setup.